Hello there, my name is Dan and welcome to my garden here in Essex, South East UK, USDA Zone 8B. So today the focus of the video is going to be on what's inside this polytunnel here. In my opinion, a polytunnel and or a greenhouse can be a very good addition to your allotment, your homesteading, your garden, small holding, whatever you want to call it, wherever you're growing food, a polytunnel or greenhouse can be brilliant if you've got the resources and the space to have one. If not, you could look into a cold frame, mini greenhouse, mini polytunnel. I'll show you an example of one of those in a moment. But for the time being, let's uh, get in there. So with regards to the size of this polytunnel, it's three meters by two meters. So three meters that way, which is about 10 feet, and two meters that way, which is about six and a half feet. And I put this up a few months ago following a disaster which happened to my bigger polytunnel, which was about double the size of this one. I'll link a video in the description box below. You can check that video out if you're interested. And I'll link plenty of other videos in there as well, which hopefully you can get some good information on as well with regards to the subject of growing food. So let's go in there now. So don't use a polytunnel or a greenhouse to grow a variety of crops. You can use it for annual crops such as tomatoes. We'll uh, have a closer look at these in a moment. Or you can use them for items of permaculture, part of an orchard even. So here I have a peach tree variety peregrine. We'll get into that in a moment. And over here we have a variety of nectarine called Lord Napier. We also will get into that in a moment. But here now, I mentioned earlier about using a mini polytunnel. Well, you can see this look here. This is a nice little microclimate here. You could have something like this outside in your garden. So if you've only got a very small garden or you don't have the money or you don't have the interest, whatever space to put up a polytunnel or a greenhouse, you can consider something like this, which can help to give you a similar effect but of course on a much smaller scale so good idea I'm, I'm using this actually to keep my seedlings in that I'm raising at this time of year they don't need the extra heat from the microclimate here but it's a good shelving but um, you could grow some nice tomatoes in this you could grow some nice aubergines in it so certainly a good resource to have so what we'll do is we will uh, delve in to the nectarine Lord Napier and have a look at the beautiful crop in which it is carrying. So Lord Napier, an absolutely lovely variety of nectarine. So first introduced in the year 1860 actually, and if I remember correctly, it's from um, Hertfordshire. So uh, quite interesting indeed. Now, lovely tasting. So let's pick one here. You can be very careful. You know, I just like to gently, gently, gently twist. Right, look at that. So taste wise, they're absolutely delicious. So they're a white flesh variety and they're sweet with a nice bit of tanginess in them as well. So I really like that. Now, last year they were a bit sweeter and that does not surprise me because you know that really hot summer that we had last year, you know, produced much sweeter fruit, didn't it? For obvious reasons, higher sugar content. But still beautiful and also if i remember correctly they were ripe a little bit earlier last year but once again that's because it was a warmer summer so no problems there but uh, lord napier so i'm gonna have a little pick of these so yeah i mean they can really easily go over and like that look you see how ready these are look they're just literally coming off in my hand here so there we go look a lovely little crop of lord napier nectarines so some people might ask me, do they get bigger than these? Well, I don't know actually, because this is only the second year I've uh, cropped nectarines here. Maybe if I thin them, maybe if I'd give them a bit more water than I gave them, maybe they'd get bigger, or maybe it's just a small variety, who knows? But um, any of you grown Lord Napier nectarines, let me know if you've had any bigger ones and what you've seen me produce here. But um, yeah, overall, I'm incredibly happy with this and I can say that if you're living in a similar climate to the UK, a see what I mean, they just drop off like that. A variety of nectarine Lord Napier, lovely to grow. So regarding tomatoes, I'm growing five varieties of tomatoes in this polytunnel here. So it hasn't been that warm this year. We did have a week or so when it got up to about 28 degrees C, which is about 82 degrees Fahrenheit. But uh, 
most of the summer, if I remember correctly, it's been sort of in the low 20s degrees C, which is about something like 68, 70 Fahrenheit, something like that. But um, interesting indeed. Although I did look actually that um, in a week or so, it's going to warm up around here, going to get up to about 26 degrees C, something like that, 79 Fahrenheit. So I'm quite happy about that. And we'll see what happens to these tomatoes. So I'm thinking of nipping out the tops of these this weekend, but I'm undecided on that. So varieties, Gardener's Delight, got a, a nice little crop on these here, Gardener's Delight. Now, Big Zach, this is the variety of tomato that got the world record for the biggest tomato. So very unlikely I will uh, get anywhere near to that, but I've got some nice size tomatoes on there. Here, this is a Paradich Paradise Cherry, which is a Romanian cherry tomato. And actually they're quite a nice size. So I was talking to a Romanian chap and he told me that um, Paradise tends to be big tomatoes. So I'm presuming Paradise Cherry, Paradise Cherry, means big cherry tomatoes. Who knows, we'll see, but a very nice crop set there. Quite a lot actually, so that's good. And here I have Grushovka, which is a Russian tomato. And once again, a nice size there. So these are actually an early ripener. They did ripen very early indeed last year, but once again, because of the weather. But um, no sign of ripening yet, but um, I'm really looking forward to my late crop of tomatoes. So let me know how yours are getting on, but uh, all in all, quite happy. I'm watering these at least every other day. Should really water them every day. You don't want to let your tomato plants dry out and then quickly water them because that, that can actually cause them to take up too much water and split, which you don't want. So I'm going to endeavour from now on to water these every day. But yeah, all under control actually. So down here I have a variety of tomato called Cocktail Crush, which if I remember correctly is actually an F1. Now I generally don't grow F1s, it's a bit too much of an intervention for me really, I'm generally more of a sort of traditional gardener. But um, I was actually given about 10 plants actually of, uh, of this variety. A fellow gardener, he grew too many of them and so naturally uh, he knows I like to grow things, he gave some plants to me. So Cocktail Crush. So yeah, quite a nice uh, little crop here. Look at that truss there, look. We've got seven nice sized tomatoes, got more up there. So yeah, looking very nice indeed. And once again, looking forward to a crop of these, but uh, a later crop. <laughs> Peach variety peregrine. So still got a bit of a crop on there. Some have fell on the floor. You know, you've really got to be vigilant to be honest with these. And the same with the nectarines. They can ripen very quickly and you can lose your crop. But uh, it's my fault and I'm not going to go over these ones on the floor that are, see what ones are decent. I'm going to leave these to the other beings to eat because it's uh, my fault for uh, not picking them. So this tree actually, well not this particular tree, but this variety is a variety from the year 1906. So like the nectarine Lord Napier, it's quite a historical variety. So let's uh, have a look. So we're going to, just going to go through this tree here and here we go. Now these actually make quite a nice big peach look at that so that really is a big peach isn't it so taste wise I mean these are absolutely beautiful like the nectarine they are a white flesh variety so sweet with tanginess very nice indeed and once again, you've got to make sure you regularly check these once they start cropping because you, they, they turn very quick. You know, they can go from what feels like rock solid to quite soft over a very short space of time. And you can literally just end up losing your whole crop, which you don't want. So some of you will not, you probably won't lose your whole crop because you'll, you'll pick some, but you can lose plenty. So some of you are probably asking me why are you growing peach and nectarine trees under cover? Well, the reason why I'm growing them under cover is because of the avoidance of peach leaf curl. I've made plenty of videos on that subject, but basically the general advice is to protect peach and nectarine trees from winter rainfall, hence why I grow them under cover here. 
you know, I have heard of people that grow them outside, but they cover them up over winter. For me, that's a bit too much of a faff, to be honest. So I just grow them undercover year round. And since I've started growing peaches, and ever since I've been growing nectarines, I've never had an instance of peach leaf curls. So uh, keeping the trees dry certainly seems to work for me anyway. So aubergines, now I really like to grow aubergines, had a lovely crop last year. I made an instructional video on the growing of these, so I'll link that video in the description box below. Much warmer last year, I was able to give them much more attention as well, and that equaled a lovely crop. So if you wanna know a bit about growing these, how to do it, check that video out. But this year, not so good. Weather, not as suitable for these, and I didn't give them the love they deserved earlier in the year, because it was around the time when I lost, had the polytunnel situation, etc., etc. But I'm making the best of the situation that I've got. So they don't like to go down below about 20 degrees C which is about 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So that can be quite hard to achieve, particularly earlier in the year in a climate such as the UK. Much earlier in the year when I first would have planted these around February, March time probably. So we're still getting plenty of frosts then. So I raised them inside. Last year I was bringing them in and out on warmer days. You really don't want to be exposing them to below about 10 degrees C, which is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, because that can actually cause them to stop growing and it can delay them. So if you're doing it that way, in and out, in and out, don't expose them down below about 10 degrees C, 50 Fahrenheit, because it could, you know, it could delay the time in which you get your crops. So they do need a little bit of care, but this year, you know, we shall see what happens, but um, check that video out. To hopefully you will like it. So ginger, I have some ginger growing in here. So this is actually from a shop bought ginger root, grocery store ginger root. And um, there you go, you can see we've got some nice little shoots there. So once again, they like it nice and warm. You wanna be going for a minimum of 20 degrees C, ideally warmer than that. So again, that's why I'm growing these here in the polytunnel. A few years ago, I did actually get a good crop of ginger, but it was from a root I purchased from home base, so I presume that was a root bred to grow in cooler climates, such as the UK, whereas on the other hand, this is just a grocery store one, so it came from wherever it came from. So we shall see what I get from this. So I actually made an instructional video a few years ago now on the growing of ginger. I'll link that in the description box below, but uh, gonna leave this as long as I can, and around the autumn time, we'll have a harvest, so uh, stay tuned for this one. So down here, I have some plants growing and they are bitter melons, otherwise known as bitter gourd. So I've grown these many times before, plenty of videos on my channel where you can check out how to grow these if you want. I'll link those in the description box below. Not expecting a great crop this year once again because of the weather, but we shall see what, uh, what happens. So these are considered to be quite uh, medicinal plants for people who have type 2 diabetes. So you might want to do a little bit of research onto the potential benefits of bitter melons and bitter melon plants. Don't um, you know start taking anything on my say so, but do your own research, which as I always state is a very good policy to have in life in general anyway. But bitter melons, lovely earthy smell and uh, a nice crop to grow. It's an acquired taste. They're very popular in southeast Asia. So I'll link a video in the description box below and you can check out how to grow them if uh, that interests you as well. Okay, so there we are. That's uh, the polytunnel video. So have you got a polytunnel or greenhouse? How's uh, your polytunnel or greenhouse faring this year? I'd be very interested to know. But you can see I've got a variety of things growing in here. Really great infrastructure, if you want to call it that, to have in your garden or your allotment. So yeah, highly recommended to get one. If you can, just make sure you secure it properly though, yeah? Because they can easily become a giant kite. I've made plenty of videos as well on how to do that on my channel, so there we are. Anyway, let me know how you're getting on. I hope uh, you enjoyed that video. Let's see if the weather warms up a little bit and uh, I shall see you all in the next video. As always, thanks for your time.